a lot of y'all have been given jobs to do. You've been given passions in your heart that your life isn't even what you desire it to be because of these passions that you have that you won't fulfill. It's dark because of sin. And it's light and beautiful and bright as the sun. The salt of the earth. Fire burning and water dripping. How could they be using goddess of magic? She is timeless. The blood that doesn't need a blood. She is the wildest woman. And let me say it again for those who need to hear it. The black woman is God. Let me say it again. The black woman is God. reveal how you really feel and if you're feeling a vibe well go ahead on and subscribe but before you click share that link welcome welcome back Wi-Fi's to the did someone order the new world order episode of the wireless woman you already know what time it is it's time to call the Role. I need everyone who watched my end of the world episode from last week back to the front of the class to read aloud. All right, so thanks for joining me. I tried a little butterfly eye today. But um, before we get into today's content, I do want to give a sincere thank you to my new subscribers. I really can appreciate when people appreciate what I'm doing. And so it means a lot to have people click that little subscribe button. You just don't know how much I appreciate it. I'm also going to give a little shout out to my minerals wear. This, uh, I got this sweatshirt from Little Black Book 91. He's also a content creator on YouTube. He has a really great perspective that I do believe lifts the black consciousness. So Little Black Book 91, it's... It's worth a listen and subscribe. So, all right. So I realized when I went back and looked at my last video that I had so much to say, but I feel like it came off pretty vague. So this is going to be my hard hitting episode to really actually tell you what I have been seeing in the prophetic and in the spirit realm. But before I get into that, I want to clear something up. In Revelation 7 and 9, it's very clear that the kingdom of God is made up of every nation, every tribe, every people, and every tongue. So when I'm speaking as a prophet to my people and my nation, that's my primary focus. But it by no means means that black people are going to be the only people there. But what people have to understand, especially here in America, is that the last shall be first. This country dedicated a whole lot of time and systems to making sure that black people stayed a slave class. And when God came to deliver his people, he came to deliver the slave class. So anyone who really wants to exhibit that their heart is rooted in following the will of God is going to understand that 
He uses foolish things to confound the wise. So you can't let your wisdom or even what we've been taught and led to believe so far in this country lead you to believe that you know who God's chosen people are. Like you follow a book where God chose a set of people. And so you're going to have to understand that for this season and for this time, God has chosen his man. You have to understand that God has put his favor on a group of people that he has chosen to lead his people out of oppression. And oddly enough, it's not just black people. It's particularly black women, which is the purpose for my ministry and my prophecy. I always talk about power and power being to the people. Let white power be to white people. Let black power be to black people. Let brown power be to brown people. That is just not my specific place of focus. However, if you really want to know and understand what God is doing, you have to be close to the heart of God. And for this season and for this time, the people that God has chosen to rest his favor upon are these people. Now, if you're not seeing that and you're not hearing that in the spirit realm for whatever reason, that is between you and God the collective consciousness of what God is ascribes to a myriad of different people and different experiences. You have everyone from Rahab and the woman at the well and Mary of Magdalene all the way to Mary, the virgin mother of God and Peter, the cursing fisherman to Paul, the repentant Pharisee. You know, there is no one way that God is doing things or one story that can sum up the sum total of the character of God. So I'm only here to see in part and prophesy in part because that's what God gave me. So now I'm going to get into the prophecy. So we are actually living in the year 2010. The year 2020 was the end of days. And the reason why the end of days didn't come is because we're in a grace we're in a grace period with God and people would look at me like, oh, that doesn't happen. But a lot of people have prophesied the end of time and it didn't come because God is a gracious God and it's his will that none should perish. He has pieces on his chessboard of how he wants to play this thing out. And it doesn't really matter what he's shown us at any given time. He's capable of making alterations to his plans as he sees fit. And I'm constantly calling out examples of that. Him giving Hezekiah 15 extra years when Hezekiah's life should have ended. Because right after Hezekiah get these 15 extra years, here he come telling Babylon everything that he got. And basically selling his people into bondage. So like... Boom, that was everything God was trying to avoid by ending his life at a certain point. So there is a light and dark side to prophecy. When God creates something, the evening and the morning is the first day. Day, as we know, it consists of a nighttime and a daytime. That's, that's the completion of a day. So prophecy works much the same way. God says in Isaiah that he would give you the treasures of darkness. And the treasures of darkness is prophecy. It's being able to look into a dark space and God shine a light. The problem with light is that darkness doesn't understand the light. It pierces darkness. So he took us back as a people to 2010 and reset the clock on 2020 being the end of days. And how you know that 2020 was the end of days is like I said to you, when Jesus spoke in Matthew 28 and 20, he said, lo, I am with you even until the end of the age. Well, the end of the age was 2020 because on December the 21st, the Christmas star appeared in the sky. And that Christmas star hasn't appeared for 800 years. So Jupiter and Saturn were aligned on the shortest day of the year during the winter solstice as we were coming into the age of Aquarius. And based on where all the constellations were, 
it left the Christmas star that's in the sky. And a lot of people don't understand these signs and times, but in the Bible, the Magi did. They knew when a certain star appeared at a certain time, it signaled the birth of Christ. So this particular star that appeared in the sky is signaled the end of the age. So God in his infinite mercy and grace gave us 10 years from that time. So what I saw in my prophecy in 2019, when I actually originally got the prophecy, because the end of days now is 2029. And I know when you get on a platform like YouTube and start talking about this is when the end of the world will happen, you sound like a nutcase. But what I saw in my prophecy was the end of days. But the end of days isn't what people think it is, like this cataclysmic event that ends all life on this planet. It is the end of this system as we know it. So I did see the God of chaos, which in the Bible in Revelation is referred to as the star Wormwood that hits the earth and it poisons one third of the water supply. So if you actually care about any of this stuff, you can go and reference it in the Bible for yourself. I don't make this stuff up of my own volition. I, one, don't have that kind of time or two, that kind of concern. It took 20 years for God to create in me the prophet that he wanted to see to even be able to prophesy these things at this time when it would come. Um, and I don't prophesy to get other people to believe me. I prophesy because God told me that if 2020 had been the end, then I would not have been with him in paradise. So me ministering this thing is like Noah building the ark. I can't get on the ark myself if I don't build it. Now, this prophecy is available for anyone else that wants to believe, not in what I said, but that in God sent me to say it. So, like I said, I'm in obscurity. I'm just my own little person telling you what I saw. Okay, spirit animals show up. I see visions. I dream dreams. And when I do, I will share them with you. That's what God asked me to do. And he asked me to be obedient to the end of that. Because like I said, when he moved all his chess pieces, I did not make it in. I did not make that cut. So, and it wasn't because of sin in my life. The Bible says that if you know the good that you should do and you don't do it, you do it not, then that is counted as sin unto you. So it wasn't about sin in my life or not being able to live a life that pleased God. It just had to do with obedience. A lot of y'all have been given jobs to do. You've been given passions in your heart that your life isn't even what you desire it to be because of these passions that you have that you won't fulfill. These callings, these dreams that you have to do and be, those are things that God intrinsically put into you in order to identify you as his. So I'm going to do mine. I've spent 20 years denying the fact that I was a prophet and it's been me denying God on earth what he wanted to work through me. I have been denying him in front of men all for the sake of not wanting to look crazy in front of people. So I'm done with that. Back to the prophecy. <laughs> so what I saw was the earth in darkness. And if you look in Revelation, it talks about how a third of the sun and the moon is going to be knocked out and that a third of the day will be dark. So I saw this darkness and I saw panic over the face of the earth and I was high up and I could feel wind blowing like I was on a mountain. And so I asked God, like, do they know? Do other people see this? Do other prophets see this? And he said, if they're on the earth at the time that it happens, they don't see it. All they see is darkness. And so about two years ago, I used to watch a lot of other prophets on YouTube just because there was so much political unrest at that time. So as a prophet, I like to calibrate myself with other prophets and see if I'm hearing what they're hearing. So there were some other prophets that had been prophesying about seeing these large waves coming over American cities. 
And at that time, I was feeling some type of way because I was like, I don't see it. I don't see the waves. You know, I was really asking God to show me that as well. But they kept saying that they were seeing these large waves. I think Sid Roth was one of the people that was saying this too. Like really, really prominent prophets were saying that they had these dreams or these visions of these large waves covering, um, covering American cities. And... They took those waves to be God's blessing and God's grace, but it's not. It's the tidal waves that are coming from this thing hitting the earth in the ocean and how that water is going to flood these American cities. A lot of Christians also have been saying that they've been getting the unction from the spirit to move out west. So this particular um, asteroid is going to hit the eastern coastline of America. So you're going to see a lot of people wanting to move out towards Africa this way. And a lot of people wanting to move out West towards California. And that unction to move is coming from the Holy Spirit, um, trying to protect people who are spiritually sensitive and spiritually aware. So also what came in my prophecy was that Joe Biden was going to win the presidency, but Joe Biden wasn't chosen by God. Like I said, in the last video, God chose a woman. And God told me that he's been trying to get a woman in office for several cycles now. There's just a completion that God has to do. And God cannot call his will finished until he's elevated everyone to the highest office. So you've got blacks who have already been put in the presidency. And now you just have to have a woman. So when you put Hillary Clinton up against Donald Trump. Nobody really believes Donald Trump is going to win. The one thing about God is that he does. People will say God is in control and God is in control, but God cannot override free will. He has to give mankind an option. You can't just choose the will of God without any other opposing force. Like I said, the evening and the morning comprises the day. So you got a choice to serve God or not to. And when we chose Donald Trump, it was like us choosing Barabbas over Jesus. And I'm not calling Hillary Clinton Jesus. I'm just saying that God had chosen two separate paths for America to go down. And Donald Trump was supposed to get those four more years because God was giving us over to what we had chosen, which was our country becoming a fascist country. It was getting ready to be like Nazi Germany because Donald Trump was not going to give up that power, period. <laughs> After those eight years, those eight years were about amassing the power that would be needed to keep him in power after that point. And we see that with the January 6th insurrection. It just wasn't quite organized out well enough. But four years later, oh, that would have went off. That would have went hard with four more years of power. So what happened is God, you, and he told me this specific language. He said, I'm using Joe Biden as a Trojan horse to get Kamala Harris into the office. And then I watched this interview like shortly after I heard him say that and they were asking Kamala Harris, what about people who say that Joe Biden is a Trojan horse for your progressive views? And I was like, look at that. So what I saw in the spirit realm is that Joe Biden is going to die in office. It's really hard for me to say because I just don't like to prophesy stuff like that. But he's not going to make the full four years of the term. And what I saw was Vice President Kamala Harris taking over the presidency for him, doing a super awesome job and being reelected for another four years. And us really having eight years of just peace and diplomacy and economic growth. But as I stated in the last video, that prophecy had since changed. So I see it going woman versus woman. Like I said, we always have to have a choice. God doesn't determine the will without looking at the hearts of men. So we're going to have Vice President Kamala Harris going up against Ivanka Trump. And from what I'm seeing right now in the spirit realm, based on what God is displaying to me, Ivanka is going to win it. And it is going to plunge this country into an immense amount of darkness. And let me reiterate that I am not political. 
if I had a political affiliation, I would probably be more Republican than Democratic, more conservative than liberal. However, I am not conservative or liberal. I am independent. I'm not moderate. I'm independent. What that means is I have conservative views. I have liberal views. I have moderate views. And based on what the issue or circumstance is, I think independently of parties and agendas to what I feel like is the greatest good. I see Ivanka Trump issuing in the New World Order. I see America linking hands with Russia and China and Iran. A lot of people have speculated because America doesn't show up in the end times language that you know, they may be a lamb country that's going to be raptured by God, but it's actually the exact opposite. The reason why America doesn't appear in the language that we have for the revelation is because America is going to be destroyed. America is going to have to be destroyed because of the level of, I mean, our country is built on blood. And because of the level of demonic activity that's going on, the only way to make sure that people don't perish worldwide is going to be to neutralize this country. So America is going to cease to be a superpower. And that is something that everyone in this country needs to begin to get prepared for. That's why the wireless woman is about living off the grid and learning how to have skills and farm and to be community centered and community driven again, because we will have to rebuild after, you know, the catastrophe that happens in this country. And it's judgment. It's judgment for so many years of displacing Native Americans, Blacks. It's it's for what we did to Japan, you know, the bombs and, and capitalizing off the Chinese to build the railroads. How many of them died laying train track, you know, and in mines and, and we didn't care, you know, we have made it not just about racial and gender injustice, you know, as, as beautiful as America is, what it stands for. We have moved away from all of the principles that made us the favored country and God is going to judge that period. So what I see is that 2022 is going to be a really, really good year. It's going to be a year of a wealth transfer. If you want to buy that house, start that business, this is the year to do it. You need to be doing it in 2022. I see 2023 as being a hard year financially and economically, and I see 2024 being another really good year. Really good year. Kamala Harris is going to be president at that time and she's going to put in a lot of really great initiatives so if you have some longer term plans some things you can't quite pull off in 2022 try to go ahead and have those things taken care of by 2024 because when 2025 comes in and ivanka trump comes into office as president is it's going to get real bumpy real rocky and it's going to escalate very quickly between 2025 and 2029, the country is going to be almost pretty much fascist, a totalitarian government. And if you are not strong in your faith, you're going to be caused, caused to take on the mark of the beast. You know, our money has been backed by gold, backed by silver, backed by oil, and this move to virtual currency is going to be backed by DNA. You're going to have to, you're going to have to exchange yourself, your DNA in order to be able to buy and sell. That's going to be, they're going to say they do it as a security measure to make sure that your money can't be hijacked again. Um, when we start to go through an economic downturn after 2025, they're going to say that they're doing it to make your money more secure, but you're going to have to put your DNA on file to be able to buy and sell and trade. And all of that is a part of a longer term strategy to actually start to insert people into the matrix. And I know all of that sounds real crazy and real wild, but there's actually only so much of the prophecy that I can see because I won't be here. 
So that's the dark side of me prophesying. In order for me to believe in this end of days, I also have to believe in something that God has shown me about my own life. So being that fearless and being that courageous for me is important because whenever God gives you a prophecy, he also gives you a burden. You don't get one without the other. You don't get day without night. So I only can take you guys out so far because I won't be here, you know. Um, but in the following videos, I'm going to do a whole I'm going to do a whole series around these prophecies and where they came from and what they mean. And in the next few videos of this series, I will actually be opening up the actual scripture and kind of what the new world order plans are, you know, because these plans have been in place since really the dawn of creation. A lot of people have not been well versed on parts of the Bible. What I mean is inspired writings that weren't included in the Bible. A lot of people aren't versed on those, so they may not be aware that the Bible is really like this big spell book. Like all y'all that, that have been trained to believe that witchcraft is, is counter-Christian, you'd actually be shocked to find out how much of the Bible does really rely on blessings and curses, which is nothing but spells and magic, you know, being able to raise people from the dead and being able to heal the sick and lame and regenerate, you know, malformed limbs. Magic. Sorry to break it to you. Your ability to walk in the spirit realm depends on which God you serve. But it's not any different. All of the same power derives from God. You know, whether you're using it to do witchcraft or whether you're using it to do miracles. It's all coming from the same place. And the same way that you have prophets that prophesy the will of God, you have false prophets. You know, and it's taken a long time for me to calibrate myself to the point of being uncompromisable in my prophecies so that I would not be corrupted. So I'm definitely going to be breaking down the New World Order agenda in the next video and how a lot of the things that we're seeing today line up with these end time prophecies and also will help you to be and will also help you to be cognizant of the schemes of the enemy, how this new world order agenda works. If you know how it works, then you can stay vigilant and sober minded. So I really look forward to growing with you and learning from you as well as sharing with you the things that I have been so diligent and patient to learn before I put those things out. And like I said, as that news ticker comes in with new information, I'll update you on what I'm seeing because all of this is outside of the script. All of this is off the script at this point. And we're having to take our notes from God as they come. That's why so many prophets got proven wrong. You know, Paula White and Michael Rogers and Sid Roth, all these Prophets and prophetic people and pastors and preachers that backed Donald Trump, they got thrown off. And I got to be honest with you, I thought it was gorgeous. I thought it was beautiful. I was like, look at God. God finessed them, you know, and he really allowed you to see which people were prophesying out of pride and weren't actually connected to his heart. They couldn't see his heart changing and him allowing people that were meek and humble and needed more time you know God is that kind of guy you know he will stay his hand to give us time and I thought it was really really interesting how they had allowed that darkness to come in and they wouldn't repent of the darkness they weren't even willing to say we don't know we're not sure this doesn't look like what we've seen God do before and we don't trust ourselves like I said that because I was like uh-uh something ain't but the people that wouldn't repent the people that wouldn't change their heart their heart condition was hardened 
they heard something, they believed it, and they never came back to consult. You know, I have tried my best to stay at the feet. So, like I said, if something different comes in, I'll definitely keep you abreast of what I'm seeing. You know, there's always good and bad in prophecy. And so the good news is we survive. Like I said last week, we survive. The meek inherit the earth. They really do. And as much as there's going to be a lot of destruction and it seems like God isn't in it, you know, it's, it's the purge, like literally, like the movie. It's the purge and he's going to see to it. He's going to take care of it. He's going to restore his creation back to balance and justice for all. You know what this country pledged they was going to do, but they, they ain't about that justice for all. Anyway, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. If you are digging this new direction in this content, by all means, share that link. It is our time to be unplugged unbothered and unleashed but until next time see you in the next one class is now dismissed